Scream Bloody Gore is considered by many to be the first death metal album ever of all time. Just like people consider Possessed Seven Churches the first death metal album ever of all times. Which is the first death metal album ever of all times? Well, I kind of think Possessed Seven Churches because half the album for the most part, or like even most of the album, is death metal, but there's still a lot of thrash in there and a lot of venom sounds. So, I mean, I guess this is the first full-on death metal album, and it's this one, death metal. Some people will even argue that this isn't even death metal, that this is still thrash, but no way, dude. The atmosphere is so dark. It's like the death metal atmosphere. The instruments sound incredibly heavy. The drums are really fast. The vocals are guttural as hell, pretty low and blood curled like a lot of death metal. And the guitar riffs especially are very, very death metal. And Chuck, the leader of death, the writer, singer, guitarist, and the man behind the band is the godfather of death metal. If you don't believe death is the first death metal band, you have to admit that they are the pioneers of the genre. Because Chuck started with what is known as like the old school death metal approach that wasn't even finished by Possessed yet. They had this finished product that was the official, original, old school style death metal. Then they went like melodic death metal, then technical death metal, progressive death metal, even like blackened death metal in some ways. They just really, really pushed the boundaries of death metal with every single album. Before we talk about the history, let's talk a little bit more about when this album came out. It came out in 87 after a bunch of demos that they released. They finally put out a full-length album. I believe they even started making demos back in like 84 when they were known as Mantis originally. The artwork is very classic, painted by Ed Repka. He does the first three album arts. And this one is an absolute death metal classic. It shows a bunch of skeletons in some sort of tomb, drinking some blood, having a good time. And the atmosphere and production of this album sounds very, very, very cold and like Evil, which I attribute a lot of Randy Burns production to that. Now we'll talk a little bit more about his brother Scott Burns who was known as the influential producer of the whole death metal scene, but Randy Burns produced this album over on the other side of the US, up from like California. He produced this album and he was also known for producing Peace Sells But Who's Fine by Megadeth, which has the same type of style of production. Production is very, very, very dark, evil, and heavy, and it's easily the most evil sounding album for sure, especially with the guitar riffs and that heavy, loud tone of the drums and bass. So yeah, Chuck, the leader of the band, he kept trying to form a consistent lineup back with like Mantis and even with Death. It never really worked out and it was always a revolving lineup. And a lot of people say that that's because Chuck was kind of a full of himself dick, which I kind of believe because he was never able to keep a consistent lineup to save his life. And he even actually had someone else do vocals for a while. I believe the guy that wanted to go form Massacre, which is another pretty good death metal band. They released many demos until they finally, finally put out Scream Bloody Gore. Before this, he actually had one of his friends, Rick Ross, out in like Florida. Because Death started the whole death metal scene out in Florida, he had his friend Rick Ross in the band, which we'll talk a little bit more about later because he's on the next album. But Rick Ross was helping him for a while, and he was like a really good guitarist working with Chuck. He left, and then it was just Chuck doing guitar, vocals, bass on this album, and he got another guy to do drums. He got some guy named Chris Reifart to do drums, who was either sacked or left immediately after this album because he didn't really care too much. So yeah, this album was mostly just Chuck, and it's very, very raw and unrefined songwriting-wise even. A lot of it's very straight to the point, a lot of it's very gory lyric-wise, and a lot of it just absolutely gives no fucks, and it pushes the boundary of how evil, gross metal can get. It's filled with a lot of the classics of the band, like Zombie Ritual, Scream Bloody Gore, the title track, Evil Dead, which is probably my favorite song of the album easily. Especially the riff and the chorus, that's just so damn catchy. There's even some slower moments like Torn to Pieces and Regurgitated Guts that are really, really good. Also, to have to take note of the crazy, crazy song Mutilation, which I used to hate, but it's just so fucking insane. Although, I have to say that there are two songs in the album that I'm not a big fan of, especially the song Sacrificial, which is originally known as Sacrificial Cunt. Never liked that song. It always annoyed me, especially the chorus and the most of like the verse and stuff in the song. It's just kind of slower paced without any really good riffs. I was also never the biggest fan of Baptized in Blood, but I do like the chorus and the faster parts of the song. 
Now, like a lot of their albums, they keep getting reissued and stuff because the original printings of the Death albums keep going out of print, so they have to keep reissuing you. And they reissued this one quite recently. And the reissue came with two new tracks, actually, that were supposed to be on the album, but cut. I don't understand why, because they're better, like, way, way better than Sacrificial. Or Regurgitated. I'm oh, sorry, Regurgitated. Got the Baptized in Blood. Beyond the Unholy Grave, I especially love. It's really catchy. And Land of No Return is another classic from them. So I don't know why the hell they cut them from the album. They should have put those two on there instead of the obviously half-assed other two songs that I don't really like here. So yeah, the album is an absolute classic. I'd say it's just as good as Seven Churches, maybe even a tiny bit better. And it overall is just really, really, really good and great, really. So yeah, the album is an absolute classic. I'd say it's just as good as Seven Churches, maybe even a tiny bit better. And it overall is just really, really, really good good and great really. I'm going to go with a very standard rating on this one. I'm going to go with the 85.273%.